Hi, in this video, we're gonna look at this, the 18 to 135 millimeter STM lens and decide, is it the perfect kit lens upgrade? Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. If you haven't done so already, head over to firstmanphotography.com, fill in your details to join the email list and I'll send you a free copy of the ebook on how to capture perfect exposure every time. Okay, let's get into this. Many Canon cameras come with the 18 to 55 millimeter STM kit lens, and many people quickly realize that this is a very limiting range, so we'll very often be looking at upgrading very soon after purchase. The Canon 18 to 135 millimeter STM lens has an impressive zoom range. So it seems like the obvious choice to upgrade at the point of purchase or possibly to replace the 18 to 55 millimeter if you already own that one. So let's delve into this and find out. I recently visited the Lake District to really test this lens out and to use the full scope of that zoom range with landscape type shots at the 18 millimeter end to more detailed zoomed in shots at that 135 millimeter end. You can check out my vlog that I shot on the day where I detailed what happened that day. I climbed a mountain, lots of other things that I did. And you can check that out now in the description down below or by clicking the video up here. The Canon 18 to 135mm STM lens is an EFS lens, which means it will only work with Canon's APS-C sensor cameras like the 700D or the Rebel T6i or the Canon 80D. Taking the crop factor of those cameras into account, this lens has a 35 millimeter equivalent of 29 to 216 millimeters. And that's an extremely useful range of focal lengths. It's suitable for so many different types of photography. And when you're just starting out, this versatility is very, very useful because you can experiment, you can try out different areas of photography, and this lens will allow you to do it without having to switch lenses or purchase more lenses. And that saves us time and the investment of even more money. The lens has a maximum aperture of f3.5 to f5.6, depending on what part of the zoom range you're at. This is very similar to the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. However, thanks to that extra focal length, it really gives you an extra ability to blow out the background and get some nice bouquet in your shot. With just seven aperture blades, the bouquet is not as creamy and delicious as it might be on more expensive lenses, but from 85 millimeters upwards, you can still achieve a pretty decent background blur. If we look at these three pictures, you can see the difference in the background blur at 85 millimeters, at 100 millimeters, and finally at 135 millimeters, where you really get the maximum effect and some half decent background blur. This is particularly useful when you're shooting portraits and you really want to isolate your subject from the background and really give it that professional style look to your portraits. And this lens will achieve that for you. To cover a few other tech specs, this lens has a 39 centimeter minimum focusing distance, which means you can get reasonably close to your subject and get some half decent macro shots, especially if you zoom in into the 135 millimeter range. It weighs in at 480 grams, which means added to your camera, it isn't gonna pull your arm off if you're carrying it around all day long. It has a 67 millimeter filter thread for all the filters you might want to attach to your camera. And it comes with 16 elements in 12 groups for the glass inside the lens. The Canon 18 to 135 millimeter STM lens comes with four stop image stabilization. I actually found the image stabilization to be particularly impressive on this lens and it's even better than the 18 to 55 millimeter lens at that same range. At the longer end of the focal length, the stabilization is capable of smoothing out some pretty severe bumps and movements in your lens. This is particularly useful when you're shooting video with this lens and it lets you achieve some super smooth shots even when you're hand holding. The stabilization also improves the low light capability and it lets you use a shutter speed four stops slower than you would normally. The Canon 18 to 135 also has the STM focus motor, which is really quiet, really smooth, especially when you're shooting video. So if we take a quick look around the lens, the first thing that strikes you is that it's a much improved quality over the standard 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. It feels solid. This one has a metal mount, which adds that little peace of mind and extra strength. Although like all EFS lenses, it is not weather sealed, so you need to be careful when using it in bad weather. The zoom ring is nice and smooth, 
and it also has a little lock switch on the front which will lock it into the 18 millimeter if you don't want to have any creep or you want to transport it the actually i'm actually quite impressed because there isn't any creep on this lens whatsoever despite it being really smooth to operate it doesn't move up and down of its own accord which is particularly impressive we have the autofocus switch and the stabilization switch on the side here and then we have the focus ring at the top it moves smoothly although it does feel a little bit loose but that doesn't really matter because this lens is focused by wire that's like all the other canon stm lenses and what that means is that it's an electric switch basically so the camera has to be powered up in order to focus and that applies to whether you're in autofocus mode or manual focus, the camera must be switched on to actually make the focus adjust. It is a full-time manual override, so even when you're in the autofocus mode, you can still use the focus ring and that will affect your camera's focus. The autofocus is fast and accurate and I didn't experience any problems with it whatsoever and I came out with sharp shots at the end. Image quality of the Canon 18-135mm STM lens is about what you would expect for a lens in this price range. It's not the sharpest tool in the box, but it's still pretty decent, especially when you take into account that huge focal range. At the wide end, this is a perfectly capable landscape lens, but because you've got that extra zoom range, it opens up some opportunities that you may not always have if you were going out with the standard kit lens. And this shot of the Misty Mountains in the Lake District really gives an example of what you can do with landscape photography at the longer focal lengths. If you want to take your landscape photographs even further, this lens couples really nicely with the 10 to 18 millimeter STM lens as well, which really gets you to those wide angles. And the two fit really nicely together and are of similar quality. I have reviewed that lens before. I'll put that up here and down in the description below so you can check that out. But having these working, working with these two together as I did when I was in the Lake District really felt natural and felt right. That's particularly true when you consider you're then having a 10 millimeter to 135 millimeter zoom range for really not a lot of money. This lens is 275 pounds in the UK and 285 dollars in the US at the current time. And that's pretty good value for money when it comes to camera lenses. Alternatives to this lens are the 18 to 200 range, which is a bigger range than this one. And that is from manufacturers like Tamron, Sigma and Canon do one as well, but they're now much older lenses and they don't have the all important STM focus motor. The quality of those lenses is also not as good as this much newer lens. So I really wouldn't recommend them uh, over this. Overall, I really liked using the Canon 18 to 135mm STM lens. The versatility it provides with decent quality is really, really good and you can use it in so many different situations and capture good shots without having to change your lens. It's a joy to use for both video and for stills and it may be the only lens that some casual shooters will ever need. If you're looking to buy a good quality family camera system with versatility to do a few other things, then this may be the lens for you. If you're buying your first DSLR camera, I can highly recommend getting it with this lens as opposed to the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. If you already own the 18 to 55 millimeter lens, I can also recommend getting this, especially if you don't want to mess around with changing lenses and you want to be having a camera that's ready for any situation. Please leave a comment down below if you've used this lens because I'd really like to know what you think about it. I'm also happy to answer any questions if you're considering buying it and do give it the thumbs up if you found the video useful. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe to the channel as well because there's videos going up every Wednesday and every Sunday and I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out.